Hi, I'm Arlen Walker, and I'm live from Pelham's Wasteland, and I am back with another episode of Solo and Spartan Games for Seclusion or Solitude or whatever other word it is that I end up saying because I can't keep track of what I actually call things. Um, yes, but today we are going to be looking at a game called Warrior Queens, which is from N.C. Patterson, um, who has been doing a whole number of uh, these micro chapbook RPGs, um, micro RPGs, things that are, are interesting and, and, and really uh, kind of built on this uh, sort of solo procedural element of, uh, you know, kind of just messing around and having some fun gaming. Um, and I think that's really cool. So um, Warrior Queens in particular has this kind of um, setting that is uh, designed to, to kind of emulate uh, heroic sword and sorcery fantasy, especially kind of uh, heroic sword and sorcery B-movies. Um, it's set in this kind of, you know, post-post-apocalyptic sword and sorcery fantasy type setting. Um, and there's some really cool stuff with that that is kind of on all the different tables and things like that. Um, and we're just going to get into it and mess around with it for a little while and uh, have some fun playing some Warrior Queens stuff. And one of the really cool things about a lot of the micro chat book stuff is that it is uh, tremendously uh, compatible with itself. So if you want to kind of take material from some of the other books, some of the earlier books, to like flesh out elements of this one. Totally possible to do that. Now, of course, the tables will be kind of flavored a little differently, um, but that's okay. You know, you can make your own tables if you want to do that or not. You know, whatever you feel like. It's solo play. Do what you want. Anyway, let's go over to the roll 20. Um, yeah, so I have this uh, wonderful image that is going to be a sort of stand-in for the starting area that we are going to start in. I've also made a couple of macros for the game. So I've got a general role macro and a role proficient and a role weekend and a spoils of combat, all of which are basically just easy ways to roll a d6 without having to type things and then an explanation of what the role does. Um, and then I've got Somariba. Somerba? Somerba? Yeah, I think that's how you say it, um, which is a name that a random name generator, a, I searched Amazon name generator on Google and uh, got the, the fantasy name generators, Amazon name generator page and got that one and was like, oh, that's a great name. And then we have a little bit of art here, which is not Somariba, Somerba. I'm going to have trouble with that name apparently, but Somerba. Um, is I think how I'm going to say it, um, trying to go forward like that. Um, but this is a, a great little icon for where um, Samarba is on a map. Um, this particular art is a, I believe it's a, a print um, by an artist named uh, Julie de Graag, who was a uh, Dutch artist, and I think this one is from 1916, if I remember correctly. I'm pretty sure I put that in my notes, and yep. Um, and, you know, it's a skull that says Memento Mori. Who doesn't like that sort of thing? Um, oh, and then this art, the, the or, or photo, is actually from Mars. It's a public domain image from uh, released by NASA, um, and it's uh, a, a mount, I wrote down the name on here, Mount Sharpen is the, the name that I got, so I, I hope that is correct. If not, I will uh, let me know and I will correct it. But yeah, um, the surface of Mars that looks kind of wonderfully desolate and fascinating and all of that sort of stuff. Anyway, let's get into Somerba and uh, making a character. So the first thing we need is that uh, the character needs warrior stats. So you begin by choosing warrior stats. You have seven points to assign between them as you see fit. No stat can have a score lower than one or higher than four. So what are we going to do? Well, to start off, we're going to spend four of our points 
giving one to each stat, of course, because that's what we need to start with. And then I think what we are going to do, um, I think we will put a two into strength and a three into charisma, maybe, as the thing for our character. That seems good. Yeah. Yeah, let's just do that because um, we're going to get uh, bonuses. Uh, hmm. Well, I don't know. I think I'm going to I think I'm actually going to switch that around and do two charisma, three strength because of some of the other bonuses that you get a little bit later, having looked through the rules for that. All right. Next, we need a warrior class and that will make us proficient in one main stat. And there's a little description of what each class is. And there are four classes for each of the four stats, basically. Berserker, Huntress, Survivalist, and Druidus. We are going to choose Berserker. And that means that we are proficient. Actually, I'm just going to put that as P next to strength. So that means that we roll 2d6 trying to get equal to or lower than our three um, to succeed at strength tests, which is uh, pretty good for, you know, 2d6 trying to get equal to or lower than three is pretty good. Obviously, 1d6 trying to get a one or a two or lower is a lot less good, um, but we're going to work on that a little bit. The first thing that we are going to do towards that, we're going to choose a warrior clan. And uh, we are going to be the Clan of Blood, which gives us plus one to Charisma, which is nice. Um, Worshippers of Blood Rage, the ancient magics of ages past, these clanswomen are known skilled bloodletters, leaders, and entertainers. They make their home in great sandstone desert cities where the blood of many humans is always present and ready to be harvested. And um, in addition to the plus one charisma, this is going to give us some useful things for blood rage, which is always a nice uh, thing. Um, and then what is the next step? We have four substats, which are these ones, which are called active stats because they're going to change over the course of play. The first one is health. Health is strength plus dex plus 20, which is 24. Pretty easy. Willpower is willpower plus charisma plus 20, which is also 24. Pretty easy. We have gold, which is 3d6 plus charisma, slash r 3d6. And that is an 8 plus our charisma of 3 is 11 gold right now. And then we have blood rage, which is 1d6 plus strength, plus wisdom, plus 3 for a druidus, and plus 3 for clan of blood. So slash r 1d6. And that is a four, four plus our strength of three plus our wisdom of one is eight plus three for clan of blood is 11. And I think I should record the maximums for all of these here just to make sure. I assume that's the maximum that you can take of blood rage after, you know, resting and recovering it. Um, but I guess we will see if that is true in play. And let's save these changes and go over to attributes and abilities. And we will put in the numbers where I set things up. That's a 24, not a 42, and it's 11 gold. And that is 11 blood rage as well. Um, and I haven't set up, I don't know how to code the abilities as well. Um, so I would I would like to set up a thing where I can just, you know, have a, a thing in the macro bar to, you know, subtract health or willpower or add to gold or whatever, but I don't have that at present. So uh, that's not there yet. But anyway, all this stuff here, and then I'm probably just gonna use these to, to track these things and leave the active stats in the text as they are. All right, what else do we need to do? We need to, let's edit this and let's go into gear because we are gonna need to get ourselves some gear. We are also going to uh, do, let's do background here 
and we are going to choose an age and a sexuality and a gender or pre and preferred pronouns, a two to three sentence description of personality, appearance, and a warrior name. Well, we already have a warrior name. We are going to be a uh, young adult female she she her and uh to do two to three description sentence description of personality and appearance i think we are going to describe ourselves as uh fiery passionate and capable just for right now because why not um, all right, and then gear, weapons and items from the clan armory. Um, we do not have very much gold, which is not so good. Um, so with 11 gold, we can afford a wooden bow staff as our item as our weapon, wooden staff to H, to H, one D two damage in melee. And then we have one gold left over and I guess we can use that to get uh, some, I think what we will get is a unleavened bread crust. Bread crust. Bread cover. One, two, each. All right, and that leaves us with zero gold. So we need to get some more quickly if possible. Um, but that is Somerba. And let's go over to the map. And I'm actually going to call this desert map. Right. So right now we are, and you can see I already set up the token. So we've got our health in red, our willpower in blue, and our blood rage in green. And we need to kick ass and take names. Um, yeah, so the first thing that we need to do is decide where we start the personal home base, um, which in our case is going to be a desert city block. So the desert city block is going to be at the center of this map. And uh, the first thing we need to do is slash R 3D6. Six squares of home base. So let's go over to here and we're going to freehand and we're going to draw in red because that's what I like to draw. And we are going to draw in large and we are going to da 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 da. And then we are also going to text and we are going to use is candle the one I like? I'm trying to remember. Let's say. Um, yeah, it looks all right, but we are going to do it as a size 20 home base. Excellent. And we're going to put that there. And we are going to, let me move this out of the way and put all of this on the map layer just for convenience so that I don't accidentally move any of it. And we're also going to call this home desert city map just to keep track of things all right so this is our home base we've got a city block where we have a rented room in a, a tavern or something and this is kind of our our base spot to do things and now we need to slash our 1d6 to determine the number of exits there's one exit so let's go back to the freehand and i wish it would save our settings better but you know what and we are going to go to map and background layer and we're going to draw an exit right there. 
excellent stuff. And then let's go to objects and tokens. And that's our exit. So that is the exit from this home base one at the top. Now, we need to determine a, another, um, doo -doo -doo, doo -doo -doo, another space on the map. So we need to go to desert city area map chart and desert city streets move chart. Mm -hmm. Choose one and roll on the move chart. Sometimes you'll run into an obstacle and sometimes you will have a new thing. So the first thing we will do is a 1d6 or 1d6 on the move chart. A two street doomsday preacher. Make either a charisma test to argue with them or a dex test to sneak past them. Lose one will if you fail and try again. All right, the first test for Somerba roll. We rolled a five versus our charisma, and that is not so good. So we lose one will. And now we have to try again. That is also not good. That's a six, which is bad in this game because we're trying to roll under. Roll again. A one. That is a one is always a success and a six is always a failure. So that is a success. We do not lose any more will and we move up to the next area. Now we need a 2d6 slash r 2d6. An eight. A back alley. It's quiet back here. Two quiet plus one to grip rolls. And then we need a 3d6 for the size. That is a 12 for the size. So let's go back to this and this. And I guess I could change some things. So we're going to do one, two, three, four. Da, 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 da. All right. That is our back alley. Back alley plus one. Right, and plus one in this case is a bad thing because that means that it's harder to succeed at a grip roll. Anyway, and now we need to have an encounter because it's a dangerous place to go around. Um, every time you enter a new area or room, you must roll to generate enemies or monsters. Enemies have their own set of stats, including health damage, will damage, and life force. Each map has two possible enemy types that can appear. When you enter a new area, roll 1d2 to determine the type using the chart below. Slash R 1d2. One on the city means we are facing criminals. So let's go over to the criminal chart, and we are going to roll a 1d6 for the criminal, and that means we rolled a 3 which is a violent drunkard. All right. Um, violent drunkards have five health and they do 1d2 will damage and 1d3 health damage because apparently they are even tougher than we are. And I'm going to, let's, let me do this and I'm going to shift this and I'm going to shift my color so that I stay on the red color that I'm using to draw things. And let's go to freehand and let's do uh, five of five for our enemy. And uh, yeah, let's get into combat. So the first thing that we do in combat, let's go back to the procedures, combat steps. The first thing we do is that we make a charisma test to show no fear in the face of the enemy. If you pass, gain one will. If you fail, lose will according to the enemy's listed will damage score. So let's roll. And we rolled a six. Now, luckily, that's a six on a grit and not a six on an attack, because if we roll a six on a melee, melee attack, we lose 1d3 gold, and we don't have any gold to lose. Um, so that's always fun. And let's go back to the right page. And uh, yeah, so we are going to take 1d2 will damage. One more will damage, so we are down to minus 121. 
Now we do range step. If you have a ranged weapon, you may make a ranged attack against one enemy in the room. Roll a dexterity test. If you pass, roll the weapon's damage and subtract. Roll them out from the target's life force. We don't have a ranged weapon, so we are going to get straight into melee. You must now make a melee attack as everyone moves into close combat. Choose an enemy and roll a strength test. If you pass, roll the weapon's damage and subtract the rolled amount from the target's life force. If you fail, you lose health according to the enemy's health damage score. Um, do, do, do. And, uh, yeah, then, um, you can flee combat if you are overwhelmed. So we failed our grit and now we took some willpower damage and now it is time for melee. So we are going to roll proficient for melee combat. And we rolled a two, which is under our strength stat, which means we do one D two damage in health to the enemy and now he is down to three good stuff and uh we are back to the top of the round i don't think we're gonna flee because why would we we can also oh this is a good place to point out that we could add a little bit of damage by spending some blood rage um and i think what we will do is we will save that for a moment because um you get plus one per point of blood rage an additional plus one per point spent if you're a clan blood members that means two points of damage per point spent and so obviously even if we roll a one on our 1d2 we would do a minimum of three damage and uh, we also get one blood rage point back each time we kill a human because we are a member of clan blood so i think what we will do is we will do another grit roll and we rolled a one so we get one point of willpower back and now we will do a strength roll because we're skipping oh no we have been hit in combat because we rolled a four and a five and that means we're going to take one d3 slash r one d3 damage from this violent drunk only one point of damage health damage so let's get back into it roll here we succeeded at our grit check again and get a little more will back and then we are going to roll our right because grit is a yeah charisma test um, and then we're going to roll a proficient attack and we have succeeded because it's roll equal to or under and then we are going to let's go ahead and check what our normal damage is we got a two, but we want to finish this guy off quickly. So we are going to spend a point of blood rage um, to finish this enemy off and then get it back immediately um, by virtue of having killed a human. So we are back at, we have taken a tiny bit of health loss and a tiny bit of willpower loss, but we're still at full blood rage. And now we can roll spoils of combat to see what this violent drunk had on them four gold for the victor and on a six we would have gotten something in addition but it is not a six and so we get four gold so let's do four and actually let's do it over here where it is easy to keep track of and close that there excellent now we need to roll how many connections this back alley has to the rest of the town slash r1 d6 and that is how many let me double check i think that is how many additional exits uh, it doesn't precisely say i think i'm going to rule that as additional exits um although maybe i'll rule it as well because no, I think I'll rule it as total exits because that way you could have dead ends because otherwise you right, you couldn't possibly have a dead end, which seems a little bit silly. So we will have one exit right here, one exit right here, and one exit right here after leaving our back alley. And we're going to put all of this on the map layer. Excellent. So next we need to do a move. I think we are going to turn right out of the back alley. So let's do a 1d6 city streets move chart. A two It's another doomsday preacher. Seems like they're all around, apparently. A roll. We have succeeded at our charisma check to argue with the doomsday preacher. 
and therefore we are back to a 2d6 roll to determine what this region is and a 3d6 roll to determine how large it is. An eight means that it is another back alleyway, but this one is only nine spaces large. So I think we will do like that. Yeah. And then we will do another bit of text and say back alley plus one grit. Clearly, we are hanging out in the not-so-nice part of town and therefore are getting stuck dealing with all sorts of nastiness. A two on the enemies means that this is a barbarian rather than a criminal. And then we need a 1d6 for what sort of barbarian this is. A two, a mohawk barbarian axe man who... Once again, five out of five for health, but does one D three and D three plus one for damage. So that's will and health, respectively. Um, excellent. So we are going to get into combat with this Mohawk Barbarian Axeman. So roll a charisma check we have failed we lose a point of will next we need to roll a melee check to try to hit this guy we rolled a two it is a success and now we need a 1d2 for damage we have rolled one damage i think we will go ahead and spend a point of blood rage for plus two damage for our thing, which means that this opponent, this filthy barbarian, is down to three health. Oh, we should have we should have rolled will damage because that was a uh, he doesn't do just one; he does a a full damage roll. So we lost three. So we need to take two more points of will. Minus two. Ah, uh, will getting a little low, not super low, but a little bit low. All right back to the top we're going to roll and we have failed so this is another place where there's something interesting because you can use willpower to re-roll one point of willpower for one re-roll basically as many times as you like so he does three points he does a maximum of three points of will damage which is you know not so good but spending one so spending one to save for three would be good spending one to save for one doesn't make any sense right i think we will just take the will damage again and of course we get a full-on minus three for that so we're down to 17 points of will but now we will roll for combat and we rolled a three to hit how much well we we need oh he's at two health not three health isn't he so let's do two health so let's roll to see if we make it um, with just the damage die of course not. So we are going to spend another point of rage to boost our damage, but it's going to come back as soon as we kill this guy. And therefore, we have uh, dispatched this filthy barbarian that was hanging out here. This this Mohawk barbarian axe man. Um, do, 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 do. Yeah. All right. Um, next, we need to check spoils. One gold for the victor. Terrible. Five gold pieces in our pocket. Um, and what do we need next? We need to see how many exits there are. There's only one exit, so this is a dead end. Um, so I think I'm going to add that to the notes. Um, dead end dead end so we're going to go back to this one and let me see whenever you every time you enter a new area or room i don't know if that means that you roll for an encounter every time you enter an already explored area when entering 
If entering an area that has already been generated, it is of the same type, same area and type as before. Um, but do we have to do a move chart? I think. <laughs> I think we probably do have to do a roll on the move chart to go back. Choose one and then roll on the move for the current map type. Sometimes you run other times when entering a new area, roll to generate it. Okay, so it doesn't say anything about, so we need to roll on the move chart to get back. We got a five, a crowded street. Make a strength test to push past everyone. Lose one will if you fail and try again. Um, all right, and let me double check because we are a berserker we have proficiency with strength so let's do that and we have succeeded so we push past everybody and we get back to the back alley and i think we do roll another encounter for here is what i'm gonna say and i guess we'll see if that's how things work because it does say every time it says every time you enter a new area or room but i don't know if that includes areas or rooms that you have already been through who knows uh let's play it this way so another one d two is a two another barbarian another one d six it's a five Ooh, this could be bad a barbarian blood berserker this barbarian blood berserker is out for blood has eight out of eight life force does d3 plus one and a d6 plus two damage d6 plus two damage that is a lot of damage considering that we only do a d2 of damage um, and also um, there's a special note about barbarians that barbarians want your blood when you roll a six in melee incoming health damage is doubled, which I think for proficiency means you'd have to roll two sixes, but that is definitely a possibility. Um, so we are going to roll for our charisma save. We rolled a three, but remember that we are in a back alley where grit is a little bit harder because it's too quiet. Um, so that means that we basically essentially rolled a four, which is not equal to or lower than our charisma of three, and therefore we are going to take a 1d3 plus one will damage slash r d3 plus one is three points of will damage. We are rapidly running out of will, at least relative to our health. Um, and now we need to roll for melee. We rolled a two and a five, which means we hit. So we do slash r 1d2. This is obviously a time to depend on our rage, and we get plus two points per rage, so we're going to take this filthy barbarian down to five life force with one swift strike. And back to the top. Roll this one. We rolled a five, which means we are going to take another d3 plus one will, and that is four points of will running out fast four points of will next we need to roll our melee attack and we have succeeded and that means we are going to roll our 1d2 we rolled a two which will take him down to three we could spend rage here but we don't need to because we can do a minimum of three damage on a hit if we spend rage so we will just take him down to three and we will go back to the top roll a charisma grit check and we have failed again because apparently we're not good at keeping our cool but we are good at hitting people minus two will and then roll proficient to hit we have rolled another success and another 1d2 is one but we're going to spend a point of rage and get it immediately back after we kill this barbarian to finish this barbarian off so let's roll spoils five gold for the victor but nothing else so we are up to 10 gold we are almost where we started in terms of cash money and now i am going to check what the rules are for returning to your home base because we have taken a bit of a beating, and let's see. 
Mark the area with a home base to indicate as your home base for the game. At your home base, you can rest to completely recover health, will, and blood rage, and level up by spending 100 gold to add plus one to one main stat. In home bases that are villages, you may also purchase consumable items, but not potions unless it is a swamp village. In the desert city, you can't buy consumables at your home base. You must find the appropriate shops in the surrounding city map to purchase consumables. Hmm, <laughs> but can you buy, I don't think you can buy any of the other like permanent things. Like the, like a new weapon or anything like that. So nothing on that front for us. Um, I think what we will do, let's see, how long has the video been going? It's been going for 35 minutes. I think what we will do is we will call this little bit of adventuring here. So Merba comes back to her home base and uh, is going to hang out there for a little while, rest up to recover everything. So let's go ahead and do that to make sure 24 will why isn't it letting me edit the health? I don't know. 10 gold, 11 blood rage, and let's go up to plus one health. We only took one damage in our adventure so far, which is good, but also we didn't, you know, we only got 10 gold, which is less good. So we are going to have to work on that a little bit. Anyway, that is, I think, let's go back to our Mount Sharpen image because it's so pretty. Yeah, that's uh, that's sort of how Warrior Queens works. Um, obviously, there's a lot that you can kind of add to the the structure of the game if you are interested. A lot of kind of um, and, and in particular, I um, I was only using stuff from the Warrior Queens core rules as they exist right now, as of May sixth, twenty twenty. Um, but there are a whole number of other, uh, micro chat book RPG products that you can check out that, um, add a number of different things that are broadly compatible with this sort of thing. So like if you wanted to, you know, like have a particular quest that's your goal for adventuring rather than just sort of wandering around to find gold and all that sort of stuff, you can totally um, there are ways to, to do that with some of the tools in the other books, all sorts of different things that can be added into the game to kind of customize it for the particular flavor that you enjoy. Um, and there's, there's definitely an element I'm thinking about trying to figure out how to kind of, you know, uh, deal with some of the, the different things in here, especially kind of set up some kind of macros and abilities that would automate some of the things because that seems like a, uh, a fun thing to do, at least for me as somebody who kind of likes that kind of um, processing stuff. But yeah, it's a fun and you can see it was, you know, basically everything that we rolled was uh, a D6 or something that could be um, structured as a d6 right a d3 or a d2 so you can pretty easily you know take your d6 and a sheet of graph paper and a index card and you know sit down at the break room on lunch break at work uh, if you're back in the office at present you know um and uh play through some adventures in this kind of strange and wonderful sword and sorcery adventure world which is super cool um, anyway, so yeah, that's our first episode of Solo and Spartan, um, talking about games for, for solitude or games for, um, seclusion or whatever the word is that I used because I can't remember. Um, but yeah, that's, that's the whole thing. That's all I got for you today. Anyway, um, thank you so much for watching everybody. There will be a link in the description to the drive through RPG page where you can pick up your own PDF copy of Warrior Queens if you would like to play along. Um, and if I, if I put more kind of work into setting up the Roll20 for this sort of thing, I may end up uh, doing a video or like writing up a short uh, Google Doc or something kind of talking about the process um, for anybody else who wants to do something like that. Um, otherwise, I hope everyone is doing well, staying safe, staying healthy, and having lots of fun gaming. I've been Arlen Walker. 
I've been Live from Helm's Wasteland, and I will see you next time. Take care, everybody.